I have a question for you. What do Jack Daniels, country music, and people dancing on drugs, hoorah, have in common? If you're thinking Tennessee, you'd be right. In this week's video, I'll share with you what it was like to travel to Tennessee in pandemic times, where I went, and if it was wheelchair accessible for me while I was there. With that, ladies and gentlemen, I am your host, the Everyday Handicap, Andre, on a journey to challenge his fears and limiting beliefs, as well as the perception of disability. I hope to inspire you to start your own journey, so let's get into it. I wanted to start this video off by explaining how it felt to finally come out of isolation, meaning maximum seeing two people at a time, into a plane packed with people and then landing in Nashville, an airport packed with people. It was the first time in my life I felt social anxiety up the wazoo. Not because people are crazy or anything like that, just because I wasn't used to seeing so many people on one spot. But luckily, I was that was able to subside once I landed. The second thing that gave me like major crazy anxiety was meeting a part of my family that to my recent memory i've never met before and the third thing the realization after a short conversation on the plane that the u.s is a car country and so most of my plans if i didn't figure that out wouldn't work i felt so stupid having forgotten something so essential but luckily together with some help of my friends i was able to solve that more on that later in the video now you're probably wondering what brought me all the way to Tennessee outside of getting to know my family? Well, we'll make it simple. Number one, the Athena Temple. I'm in love, sort of, like a love-hate relationship with Greek mythology. I really am fascinated by how our history came up with something so intricate to explain themselves the world. And so I had to go see the recreation of it in close to Nashville. And what I loved the most about it was the little pictures, stories you could see in the roof of the temple depicted very small. What I was sad about though, was that when I got there, the temple was closed. What it did give me though, was an opportunity to continue testing the camera, the video footage. And as I was doing that, I caught two belly dancers on camera practicing their choreo and then I had to go up to them and ask them for their Instagram, which I left down in the links below so that you guys can go follow them and show them some support. Let them know Andre sent you. What we did after that, after taking some pictures, testing out the camera with the wheelchair, making sure I could do everything on my own, I got hungry. So we went to eat. We were suggested this barbecue place that was supposed to be very famous, which name I already forgot, but that's not too important to the story. What is important is that when we got there, people, the city was packed. Like, I mean, seriously, people were everywhere. Like to the point where the social anxiety I was talking about earlier just skyrocketed once again. It was back with a vengeance. I mean, people were literally everywhere and not all of them were wearing masks, you know, all that solidarity and stuff. It was just great. We tried to get to the barbecue place, but the line wrapped about twice around the building. And I was like, uh-uh, we are not gonna do that. So we fought our way through the masses of people and finally arrived at a nice little restaurant somewhere in the middle that also had a brewery. Drinking responsibly like everybody. I did not drink because I always have to drive, but we did get to eat some amazing burgers and I got to sit by the window to see all the live action of people dancing on trucks. I mean, literally dancing on trucks, standing in lines to get on trucks to dance on them. So this, this idea blew my mind. It's, it's a business idea that I would have never thought of. That is so simple, but apparently very effective. And the funny thing was that I felt like everybody that was there we're doing the same three sets of dance moves. You know, the one where you move your body, then you shake your butt, then you move your body again, and then you shake your butt again. Yeah, I felt like everybody was doing that. And then they were putting their hands up like this. After we ate, we went and we strolled through the city. And even that was difficult. Even though I am in a wheelchair and I have this handy dandy sound that nobody can hear when the place is crowded. But we made it all the way to the checkpoint a bridge. I don't know the exact name of it, but from there, we could see the city just beautifully lit up in the night sky. And I was in love with that moment. I just felt like, okay, this is, this is the reason why I want to travel more. It's moments like these. Then day number two came and 
our journey destination was supposed to be the Jack Daniels distillery, but someone had a different idea. Our plan was to go to the distillery today, but for obvious reasons, uh, that's not gonna work because the distillery itself is mostly outside. You're probably wondering yourself, Andre, what did you guys do? And we went to the mall. And I'll tell you why I'm excited about that. I've been a person over the last two years that I didn't buy myself any new clothes. And I wasn't intending on doing that either. And I didn't do it at that mall. But the, the idea of going to the mall had sparked a conversation between me and my family where they had asked me, Andre, why do your clothes always look so used? And I had explained to them that the reason why is because my clothes have a duration of about two and a half months before they break, so I didn't want to invest any more money into it. And that was my mindset for a very long time. Until, I don't remember exactly who said it, but someone said something along the lines of, yo, your clothes are your dignity. So like they're a representation about how much you take care of yourself. So when you don't take care of yourself and your clothes, then that's a reflection to other people that you're not doing okay. And now I didn't really care about that, but something that was underlined was the word dignity, where I thought on that for a while, especially in the commute uh, towards the mall. And I realized that, yeah, wearing something and being able to look in the mirror and, and have that, you know, thought spark in your head that, damn, I feel good, or damn, I look good, depending on where you're looking at that moment. I like how clothes feels more than they look. Uh, that is something very important. It's something very important to our confidence as well. Like I'm not pointing at the fact that we're supposed to be materialistic. I'm just saying like, when we take care of our dignity, we're more confident with everything that we do. So there I was in the mall, excited with that thought in my mind. I didn't buy anything, but I did look at everything that caught my mind. And here are two things that I want to elaborate on. Number one, I saw my first brick and mortar Amazon store. And I think subconsciously, I already knew what they were gonna sell, but I was just so baffled, I had to go inside. And yeah, 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 it was books. Yeah, I, I expected more too, I know. They're the everything store, I get it. But after taking some shots, of publicity shots with some books, that I'm thinking about reading, let me know if you've read any of those before down in the comments below, I headed back out. And there, ladies and gentlemen, I found a Peloton store. Why is that significant? Why am I so excited to tell you guys about a Peloton store? Well, riding a bike is something that I've always wanted to do. Yeah, I've read, uh, I've, I've ridden a tricycle before, I've ridden a lay down bike, but I've always wanted to ride a mountain bike or a speed bike. But due to balancing issues, I've never really had the chance to. So I thought this was the perfect opportunity to do a trial run. And so that's exactly what I did. I drove into the store and I told them, hey, I've never driven a bike before, which I haven't. I'd like to try driving this one because I have no chance of falling on this one. And they said, sure, really cool staff, really cool people. Shout out to that store. And they put me in, the, in we put my, we put me in the chair. What I really appreciated about the bike was that it had straps I could strap my feet in and then get going. And it had all these kind of nice finagly functions like a digital pathway so you felt like you were driving. And it was great. And after a while, while I was wheezing and queezing like a gamer that gave himself 30 seconds to run down three flights of stairs, grab a bag of chips and back up the stairs to not miss the start of the next game, I asked how much the bike was. When they told me the price, the only thing I could answer was, does it do the exercise for me? They did not get the joke, but that's okay. Anyways, as fast as I heard that price, I left again, searching for the next curiosity. And little did I know that within all of that action, this happened. So it's now been four hours since we left? Four hours, right? Six. Six hours? Six hours. Oh my God, <laughs> it's been six hours since we left out. And guess what? We're still trapped in the mall. So that's all good and great. We spent six freaking hours in a mall. And I think the last two hours, we were just waiting for everybody else to get done with their to-do list in the mall. Yeah, I know. Mall is a great suck of time. Let me know in the comments down below what's the longest time you got lost in a mall. I'm really curious about the numbers there. So that was the highlight of that day. 
Now let's go over to the third highlight of my trip in Nashville, which is the Jack Daniels Distillery. Maybe I wanted to get away from the hustle and bustle of the city. The truth is, the Jack Daniels Distillery has been around for 146 years. Don't quote me on that. However, in that time, all they've done is grow, 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 grow. They're available on most parts of the world, which I think is crazy. And I myself, as someone who loves to figure out how businesses work, just wanted to see it from the inside. Sadly, I didn't get to see as much about the business process as I did about the creation process of the distillery, which in itself was really fascinating. Did you know that Jack Daniels Distillery only has one master distiller for an entire generation, and then it's still passed down just like in the old times, which I think is super crazy. Also, they've got the production line so figured out, so timed, that most people don't even need to pay attention to it. <laughs> Sorry, I probably shouldn't say that one. Cut. You know, they have their ripening system so far down that they never run out of alcohol to sell. And that, for 146 years. I'm sure they made some mistakes down the road, but I call that a system well thought out, well trialed and errored, well improved 1% of the time. The other thing I was surprised by was that this mega distillery still operates out of the same location it did 146 years ago. I mean, think of that. Some guy walked up to that place, said, yeah, this water is great. Yep, this location's good. We're gonna make a headquarters here. And that's what happened and that's where it stayed. The only thing that's moved so far is the office, like where they do like the office work. But other than that, everything else has stayed traditional minus the equipment that's improved over time to, uh, to keep up with efficiency. Another thing that made me laugh so hard was that the, I, I believe it was the founding father and of the Jack Daniels, but don't quote me on this, correct me in the comments below. But at one point he forgot the code to his safe and he got just as mad as I do when I try to open my house door and my spasm doesn't let me get put the key in the hole and I keep stabbing at it and have to go pee. Anyways, unlike me, he decided to kick the safe, which broke his leg and the affected amputation, I believe, then caused him to die from an infection of the wound instead of the actual kick of the safe. Now think about that, he just kicked his safe and died. It was a great lesson in anger management, don't you believe? Don't take my word for it. Head down there yourself and let me know what you think. Or if you've been there before, write what you thought was most fascinating in the comments below. Now, remember I mentioned earlier how lucky I was? I think this is something really important you need to take care of before you get to Nashville. But before that, Let's jump into the question of the week. What is something that you know today that you wish you would have known three years ago? Let me know in the comments below. For me, it would have been the idea of a neutral mindset. It's helped me so much along this journey and I'd be happy to expand on it in a different video. Now, the lucky break that I had when getting to Nashville is this Scooby Mobile. It was big enough so that all of us fit in the car and I could even lay in the back sometimes and sleep while everybody else was doing other things. It also fit my power chair in, no problem. Not that that is a problem because I can deconstruct it, but it was just nice to be able to get in and go and not have to reconstruct the chair for anything. But that also leads me to the review of this, this stop in my journey. The question I ask myself is, would I recommend this stop, the stops that I made, to someone who's completely wheelchair bound. I wouldn't if you are trying to travel absolutely by yourself and you're trying to travel on a budget. Because yes, you could travel by yourself and yes, you could probably get to every destination if you get yourself an Uber, but over time that gets very expensive and not all Uber, Uber drivers are well equipped to handle your situation. Yes, there's probably a service you can hire that will escort you around, but because you're a, a person of one, it will be way more expensive. So if you are a person that is dependent on a wheelchair completely, I would suggest that if you go to Tennessee, go directly to the city center so that you can still use your uh, power chair or wheelchair without any problems. And if you wanna go anywhere outside, make sure that you have a tour guide or someone with you that can help you overcome the obstacles because the, out, 
lane areas are not as handicap accessible as the city itself. Who would I recommend it to? I would recommend it to someone who has a disability that, that doesn't affect their entire body, where they're still able to get up and get upstairs and then uh, someone else can carry their wheelchair upstairs or to someone who uses no wheelchair at all. Because most of the accessibility created in the city is for elderly people. So if you're similar, if your disability is similar to that of an elderly person, you'll be fine. Now from a fun factor, I would say that going without someone you know Unless you're really, really interested in country music, in um, the history of, for example, the Jack Daniels, or in getting to know people, I would not recommend going alone because it is a very dry experience if you're not naturally interested in the things that I talked about today. By the way, if you like the content that I'm doing, hit that like button and that subscribe button. And if you feel like it, check out last week's video because I'm signing off right now and wishing you a great evening.